Good evening, everybody. I hope everybody's been doing great. God bless everybody. Um, I wanted to speak a little bit about sin consciousness and the book of Hebrews and something that could help people out there like myself who've struggled with guilt, shame, condemnation throughout their Christian life that's actually led you to question your salvation. Uh, a lot of people don't know what the Bible actually teaches as regarding to sin and your conscience and what is supposed to happen, the, the effect the gospel is supposed to have on a child of God once they truly understand what has taken place at the moment of salvation and what Christ truly accomplished on the cross and how God approaches our sins. Uh, because I think a lot of times people struggle with fear because they, we all know, most of us, uh, Christians out there living in fear, basing their salvation off of their feelings, thinking that their salvation or their state, their eternal state is according to how they feel we know that's not true because our feelings come and go but Christ what he did is eternal for us so you can't base your standing with God based upon how you feel no matter what you've done because no matter what you've done in your life it will never change and can never change your standing in the way God sees you I want everybody to understand that out there a lot of people don't understand that a lot of Christians do not understand that the way God views you, no matter what you've done, is the same way He views Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. As He is, so are we in this world. But the Christian will come back and say, well, I don't understand. Why do I feel this way then? Why, why do I feel the guilt, shame, condemnation? Uh, I don't feel like God views me a certain way. See, that whole assumption, that whole premise, it's based upon a false... That whole statement right there is based upon a false premise. What The premise that your feelings has anything to do with how God views you. All right? Like God gave you a moral compass to the point to where... You can tell if you are saved or not according to how you feel. That is crazy, but that's how a lot of people think. They think if they feel scared, if they feel fearful, then that automatically means they're not saved. No, no, no. The enemy wants you to feel scared. The enemy wants you to feel fearful. The enemy constantly wants to destroy you. And what better way to destroy you than to make you fear all the time? Make God out to be a monster. Make Make it out to be where salvation is an unattainable process that you have to accomplish by jumping over the moon. Anyways, what I'm getting at about consciousness, sin consciousness, is in Hebrews chapter 10, I think it is, talks about the law and the sacrifices that Israel was giving yearly to cover their sins, not remove their sins, not the blood of bulls and goats couldn't remove the sins it could only cover and it could only appease for a year and it would constantly remind them of their sins constantly over and over every year they got to kill these animals to cover their sin uh, and it's just over and over but how many Christians in this life still live that way even though that's not we're not in the old covenant we're not bringing sacrifices to remind us of our sins all the time. What the gospel is supposed to do in Hebrews 10, uh, I think it's Hebrews chapter 10, let's read it. For the law, having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers there unto perfect. What is that saying in a nutshell? 
all of those, all the blood from bulls and goats and those sacrifices could never, once and for all, uh, pay for the sins of the people back then. Because it wasn't Christ's perfect shed blood. So that blood was just to cover sins for a year. But then it says down here, to, for then would they not have ceased to be offered? There's the question. What it's saying is, if the blood of bulls and goats could have settled the sin debt once and for all, it wouldn't have to be offered continually, continually all the time. That's what the, he's saying there. For then why would they not have to cease to be offered? Because that the worshippers once purged should have had no more conscious of sins. So this shows you right here. Back in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant with Jews, their yearly sacrifices, it was constant reminder of their sins. It could not cleanse their conscience. Okay. Three, but in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. It tells you right there. Four, for it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. There you have it. And then it talks down here in five, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body thou hast prepared for me. Six, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast no pleasure. Here we go. God doesn't have pleasure in that. That's a constant reminder of sins. That's part of the law. Part of the law is to show people how harsh. Show people the standard if you were to work your way there. Okay. And doing all those sacrifices every year, that still couldn't make them perfect. They temporarily appeased for their sins for a year. And it would constantly remind them of their sins. Now what the gospel is supposed to do. Hebrews 10.14 for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. By one offering Christ, what the gospel is supposed to do, one of the ramifications, one of the uh, one of the awesome things about the gospel is supposed to do is sprinkle your conscience clean. It's supposed to rid you of a guilty conscience. It's supposed to have no con sin consciousness once you truly start to understand what Christ has accomplished on the cross for you. Am I saying... What a, am I saying that you're supposed to never, ever uh, feel uh, any guilt or shame for any sins you commit after you believe in God? No, 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 no. No, what I'm saying is the reaction to your sins after you believe the gospel should be, thank you, Lord, for paying for that. You should be grateful and thankful and rest in His finished work. It should not be, oh my gosh, I better do something to fix this. I better go make a sacrifice, bring my own sacrifice like Cain did to God to make it good between me and God. See, because that's that's foolish, uh, vain, prideful thinking that you, after you committed a sin, you can go make it right with God. No, you can't. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. The only thing that makes it right is what Christ did on the cross. You can't make anything right with God that you've done wrong. Only Christ can, and He has on our behalf. So Christians out there that are trying to appease God for what you've done wrong, trying to fire up prayers to, because you think God is PO'd at you, you think He's upset with you, that's you in your mind making that up. That is not the way the Bible teaches. The Bible does not teach that when we make when we sin as Christians, that God is PO'd at us, He turns His back on us until we fire up enough uh, prayers and sacrifices to make Him not mad at us anymore. Guys, we have a clean slate. There's nothing you can do to make God love you more or love you less. It is done. When Christ said it is finished, He meant it is finished. What? What is finished? Everything that was required to, to uh, repair and bring you into a right relationship with God has been finished at the cross. 
And what is your part to trust Christ? It's that simple. What do the Lord shippers believe? They believe it is finished only until your next sin. That is the ultimate blasphemy. People saying that you, your sins you commit after you become a Christian are for you to uh, take care of and you better stop that or it's not going to be forgiven. Here's the deal. All of it's already been wiped clean and forgiven. You just got to trust Christ. When you make mistakes, when you sin, the new born again part of you has no pleasure in that. Okay? We can't get mixed up that it's the flesh side of us that gets pleasure in sin. It's not this the real side of us, the true born again identity. All right? And what the gospel is supposed to do, like I said, is once a person starts to understand what Christ has truly accomplished, is to rid you of a guilty, guilt, shame, condemnation, condemned conscience. That's what it's supposed to do. Well, that's why it says in 2, should have had no more conscience of sins basically saying they should not be worrying about it anymore in the context of thinking that oh my gosh I've made all these mistakes I'm going to go to hell if I don't do this if I don't do that no 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 Christ sacrifice is supposed to rid you of that but I am not saying that it's wrong for a Christian to be ashamed of committing any act wicked acts no 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 but where you got to understand is that that is not you, okay? And you've been forgiven of that. God already knew you were going to do that. A lot of people don't understand. God already knew everything you're going to do. Does that mean it's okay? No. But that does mean that He's already forgiven it. Move on with your life. The only way that you can move on with your life and uh, be an overcomer in this life is, by, is to recognize what Christ has done. You can't be a person that gives up and wallows in the dirt and the mire and just have a glass half empty negative attitude type person that thinks every time you make a mistake God is two seconds from flicking you into eternal hellfire. That is insane. Gospel is an uplifting thing. It says that no matter how many mistakes you make, God knew you before you were born, and He loves you that much, knowing everything you would do. Knowing everything you would do, He loves you that much. And that should make some people, it should make everybody virtuous, because how many people have murdered, how many people have raped, stolen, uh, lied, cheated, whatever, etc., etc.? And the Bible says if you believe upon Him and trust Him, you are eternally saved and eternally secure. What love is this that He can love you so much, no matter what you've done, He's on your side. He's not on your sin side. He's on your side. His, your sins, He's already forgotten. And your slate is clean. If any Christians out there keep feeling like their slate is not clean, or keep saying it, or keep teaching that, that is not taught in the Bible. Your slate is clean. If any Christians out there feeling like God is condemning them, or God is coming after them, or something, well, you're not believing what the Bible teaches, because there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And the description of that is, who walk along after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That's just a description. That's not saying you won't be condemned as long as you don't blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. It's saying, it's describing us as what we are. We are of the Spirit. Those that walk, those that live basically after the flesh and walk after the flesh, they're nothing but a flesh, dead, 
dead in sin person. Those are the unsaved. We walk after the Spirit. We live after the Spirit. And that's a fact. So this sin consciousness thing, Christians teaching each other that when you sin, you better fire up sacrifices and this and that to God. Because He's PO'd at you now. That's not taught in the Bible. What's taught in the New Covenant is that He has forgiven you of everything you'll ever do. And there's no problem between you and God. Some preachers preach, get right with God. They preach to born again Christians, get right with God. Well, there's different contexts to that. Some Christians mean when, I'm sorry, some preachers, when they say, you better get right with God, they mean, you're a saved born again Christian, why are you acting like this? You better straighten up. And some of them teach when they say, you better get right with God. You're on the verge of losing your salvation, or you, you better straighten up. So when somebody says, here's another thing I want to talk about. When somebody says, you better get right with God, you want to ask them, what do you mean by that, get right with God? Because according to the gospel, I was made right. I trusted Christ, and He eternally made me right. But I do agree, if a Christian is living wrongly out there and, and just wickedness, just acting crazy, they need to stop that. But that doesn't mean God views them in a bad way. He loves them. So does God look at the Christian that's trying to strive uh, for holiness, live a good life, and this and that, and then he sees a Christian over here going out to the bar every night, going to strip clubs, doing this, doing that, what not. Yes, I said it, guys. Some people get mad at me for saying that. You know, how could a Christian ever do anything like that? Well, you know, you need to read your Bible because there's plenty of Christians in there that murdered people and slept with their own relatives, okay? Anyways, if a Christian's out there, okay, does God, the question is, does God view a Christian who's trying to strive for holiness and live a good life, do the best he can to uh, be a good Christian, and then you got another Christian over here that's doing everything on their side. Does God view them any different? Well, he doesn't. God still views both of them as the righteous of God in Christ. That is a fact. That'll make a lot of people mad. Well, if you're a works-based mindset person, yeah, you will get mad when I say God views every Christian with the same love. He's no respecter of person. No matter what a Christian's doing. Alright? Does that mean it's okay about what they're doing? No. It does not mean it's okay. But it does mean that God has forgiven them of everything they've done and are doing. That's how powerful the blood of Christ is. If you don't like that, well, don't let the door hit you on the way out. But that's the way the Bible teaches. We've been once and for all forgiven. I've heard it put this way. God is not in a swivel chair that turns his back on you once you make mistakes until you make it right. No. He's forgiven and forgotten everything you'll ever do. But then what is the key to living that overcomer life? Well, first of all, you know, always understand your standing. And sin consciousness, you can't be overtaken by things you've done wrong. When you dwell on it all the time, it's going to happen. You need to realize the love of the Father, perfect love casts out all fear. A lot of people have a problem with fear, and that makes them go down wrong paths. Okay, fear will destroy people. Uh, and, the, and the enemy is out there trying to give a heavy dose of it to all Christians because he hates us all. delving into the scripture and realizing the love of the Father will start to help you when you're down. And it will start to help you when you're caught up in things. Realize God will never change His view of you. Now, some people hear me say this and they'll think, oh, he's just preaching, do whatever you want. And, then, and uh, there's no ramifications and it's fine. I'm not teaching that reap what we sow. But what I am teaching is God has already forgiven and forgotten your sins. What Christ did on the cross is so unbelievably powerful and shocking 
that a lot of Christians, even though they're saved, still can't get it through their head that he remembers your sins no more. If anybody's bringing your sins up, it is you. It is you bringing up your sins. As far as God's concerned, he said, what are you talking about? I've already settled this 2,000 years ago. Christ paid the price, and then it was put to your account the moment you trusted him. So what are you talking about? Am I saying a Christian can't pray to God about their sins? No, 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 I'm not saying that. Pray to God. Ask the Lord to deliver you. Ask God to help you. He will, because He loves you. But He is not trying to uh, whip you and spank you and uh, beat you for your sins. He is not bringing your sins up to you. The enemy brings your sins up to you. All right? The Bible teaches God has forgiven and forgotten all your sins, so why would He be bringing them up to you? It's just so illogical. It's the way sometimes people believe. I used to believe it that way, though. That was the most sinful I've ever been in my entire life when I used to believe that God constantly brings our sins up to us and punishes us for our sins and is on the verge of killing us if we don't stop. I, I mean, I was just going crazy. But when I started to realize that he's paid the price and he's finished it, I started to live. I started to not be so afraid. And then shackles started coming off. People think it's counterintuitive. They think fear, fear is going to make it, fear is going to help you. They take out fear God out of context. And they don't understand fearing fear God, the correct context is a respect, okay, but anyways, I'm going to end this video, I just wanted to go over how Christ's sacrifice should help you with consciousness of sins, you should not be uh, holding your sins higher than Christ's blood. Because it's already been forgiven and forgotten. Move on with your life. Thank God what He's done for you. Delve in His Word. And rest in the finished work of Christ. It's perfectly fine. See, God, the God, one more thing. The Bible teaches that there is a godly sorrow. Alright? I'm not saying that a Christian can't be sorrowful. It's a sign of your born again heart. If a person was to weep over their sins and understand what a wretch they were, woe is me. It's a beautiful thing for a person to start to fathom how awesome God is, how they don't deserve a thing, and He still loves them so much. I'm not saying that's unbiblical. There is God, Godly sorrow. But it's not the sorrow that leadeth you to be scared out of your mind that, that it leads you to insanity. But it's a godly sorrow. It's not bad. And God bless everybody. And uh, I hope everybody has a great day. And uh, I'll try to make some more videos soon. God bless everybody.